One of the most significant developments in modern Jewish history in Eastern Europe was the rise of secular literatures in Yiddish and in Hebrew. Uh, the development of Yiddish literature, of Yiddish theater, of Hebrew literature, meant a lot of things. It meant that as Jews were leaving the traditional world and looking for new role models, for new opportunities, for new options, they found models, they found characters to study and emulate in novels, in uh, plays. Uh, Yiddish writers became extremely popular. Their works were now read in shtetl libraries. Wandering troops of Yiddish actors took the achievements of this burgeoning culture into the far reaches of the pale. Yiddish literature has been considered by some people to be like a beautiful New England autumn in that it is stellar, it's gorgeous, but it represents a kind of ending rather than a beginning that had the traditional Jewish religious world remained unchanged, you would not have had that great literature of Shalom Aleichem, Mendele, Peretz, Ash, Raisin, Sutzkever, and others, because the traditional religious world was not interested in it. And many of the children of these Yiddish writers were also uninterested in that language and went on to English, Russian, and Polish. And so many consider Yiddish literature to be a literature of transition between an old Jewish world uh, and a new world that the Yiddish writers themselves could not really enter. However, there's another point of view which sees Yiddish literature as a promising beginning, as a true revolution in the history of Jewish culture, uh, as a cultural adventure and journey which was seemingly cut short by the war and the Holocaust and which, perhaps surprisingly, is now being picked up in a certain way by writers coming out of the Orthodox community. Uh, the story of modern Hebrew literature, of course, is very different. Since the founding of the State of Israel, modern Hebrew literature has been flourishing. That said, we must also emphasize that in a certain way, modern Hebrew literature played as great a role in this project of a state in the making, Medina Baderech. Modern, Yiddish, modern Hebrew literature was critical in giving the young Jews in the 1920s and 1930s giving the pioneers of the second Aliyah before World War I a moral and a psychological anchor. Rachel Katznelson wrote an amazing essay called Language Insomnia. And in this essay, she describes how 
in those terrible years before World War I, these young people in Palestine, totally exhausted after a hard day's work, living in primitive conditions, yearned for Yiddish. They longed to read Shalom Aleichem in Peretz. They wanted to relax with the latest novel of Shalom Ash, but they forced themselves to read Hebrew because only Hebrew, they believed, was truly revolutionary. Only Hebrew represented the real break with the past. Yiddish was too homey, too familiar. It was too emotionally comforting. Yiddish rep Hebrew represented distance. Hebrew represented a new beginning. And this, of course, was the great irony of Hebrew, and this was the great irony of the Zionist movement, represented by such stories as Chaim Hazaz's The Sermon. That is, Zionism, on the one hand, is a great continuity with the Jewish past, a return to the ancient homeland, but on the other hand, Zionism is a radical discontinuity. On the one hand, Zionism represents a great loyalty to the Jewish people. On the other hand, Zionism represents a rude rejection of much of what is important and dear to the culture of the Jewish people, especially in the diaspora. Be that as it may, the rise of these secular literatures was in and of itself an important turning point in the modern history of the Jewish people.